The URL session API has many moving parts centered on the URL session class itself. As you know, to create a session, you need an instance of the URL session configuration. You then use the session to create a URL session task instances to transfer data from or to a server on the network. It's much more efficient to create multiple tasks in a session and not for a, not a session for every task. You can create a task with a completion closure to handle the server's response or implement delegate methods to monitor progress and handle response data and authentication challenges. If you think of this API like a body, the session configuration is the brains, the URL session is the heart, and the session data tasks are the hands. There are three concrete subclasses of URL session task, URL session data task, URL session upload task, and URL session download task. A data task returns the response as an object in memory. An upload task is very similar to a data task, but it makes it easier to provide a request body. A download task doesn't return the response in memory, but writes the data to a file and returns the location of the file. All three types are similar in the way that they supply some data to the server as a request and receive some data from the server as a response. For this demo, we'll use a data task. You'll get the data received from a service, which can then transfer it into JSON. One big important note about tasks is when you start a task, they are created in a waiting state. To start the task, you must call the resume method. One of the biggest errors working with tasks is to create the task and to forget to call resume. When you start debugging some code because it isn't returning data, the first place you should check to see is if you actually resumed the task. In this course, we'll be querying the iTunes Preview API. It's a great way to download and play around with live JSON. To get started, create a playground. We'll start first by getting our configuration. Next, we'll create a session from the default configuration. Now we'll create a URL, passing in Cohen as the search term. We could force unwrap it, but I'll use the guard instead. Okay, now we need to create a task. We want to create a task that will fetch the JSON from the service and ultimately print out the contents of the JSON to the console. We do this by creating a data task, passing in a URL. Now, everything occurs in the trailing closure. This is what will be called after the task is completed and will occur off the main thread. So if you're going to alter the user interface, then make sure to do it on the main thread. This closure takes in three objects, the data, the response, and an error object. The data is an actual data object being retrieved from the server. The response is a URL response, but if you make an HTTP request like we are making, the returned object is actually an HTTP response. Finally, we receive an error object to see what's happened. First, we check to see if we have a valid response. We cast our response into an HTTP response, and then we can check the status code.
In this case, we're just checking to make sure that what we received is in the 200 range, which means everything is fine. There are lots of other status codes out there like 404 page not found, 500 server error, and so forth. Next, we check if we received valid data. We take the data and convert it to a string and print out the result. Now you'd think that would be it, but by default tasks start off in a suspended state. We have to start the task and we do that by calling the resume method on it. Run the playground. And voila, we made a web request and we got back some JSON with just a little bit of code. Better still, we get all the bells and whistles of the network framework, ensuring our users have a pleasant experience no matter what type of network they are using.